Hi, I'm Sarah with Faithful Finish Lines. Welcome to From Couch Potato to Triathlete, How I Lost 100 Pounds Using Three Weight Loss Secrets. And I'll be sharing those secrets with you today. This is my before and after picture. All of my life, I was overweight. I struggled with compulsive eating, overeating, emotional eating. And I would try to lose weight, and sometimes I would lose as much as 40 or 50 pounds, but always the pounds would come back. And you know how it is when the pounds come back, they often bring friends. So I would end up even heavier than before. It wasn't until 10 years ago that I started therapy to really get into the underlying reasons of why I was overeating and deal with those that I was able to lose the weight for good. Now, I won't have time today to share my whole weight loss story, but I encourage you to come to my website and check it out. But I do have three great secrets to share with you today. Now, before I go any further, I have to brag a little bit. This is my beautiful family. And the reason that I share this picture is I want you to know that I'm sure you have lots of things going on in your life, family and friends and commitments and house and home. And I had all those things going on too while I lost 100 pounds and even today while I'm maintaining that weight. So I encourage you that even though you have lots going on, it is absolutely possible to lose the weight. So as I started therapy and digging into why I was overeating and what I could do to stop it, that was all I did for the first six months or so. I didn't do any particular diet, any exercise. I just went to therapy because that was really all emotionally that I could do. But after I had been going to therapy for a while, I started the Weight Watchers online program because I knew I needed some type of structure to my weight loss. And the way the program worked at that time was that when you would exercise, you could eat more. You got more points or food. And I'm very motivated by food because I do love food. So I started exercising a little bit. I started with walking. And then after I had done that for a while, I joined a gym that was close by me. And around that time, I heard about the program called Couch to 5K. A 5K is three miles. Now, I had never done any type of race at all. I was always the couch potato, the girl who was picked last for the gym team when I for the teams in gym when I was little. But I was intrigued by this. Could I do something like that? So I trained for it and I signed up for an event. Now, the night before the race, I was so nervous. I did not sleep at all the night before but I was able to complete it. And then my sweet husband got me flowers at the finish line because three miles was a really big deal to me at this time. For me, that was a big deal, but I did do it. So that leads to weight loss secret number one. Nothing on the outside will fix what is broken in the in, on the inside. Yes, I did use different programs like Weight Watchers, which I do recommend, and I did this race, but it really had to do with fixing what was broken on the inside for me. And for me, accepting God's grace and compassion for me, using Bible verses, surrounding myself with God's word was a huge part of my weight loss. Well, after I had done this 5K, I admit I was a little bit hooked. Could I do something more? So I said to my husband, I think I could do a half marathon. And he said, are you crazy? Do you know how long a half marathon is? A half marathon is 13 miles. That's really far. But I was pretty sure I could do it. I thought if I just walk a minute, run a minute, and keep going and train for it, so that's exactly what I did. Every Saturday morning, I would get up and I put on my little fuel belt. I was learning about nutrition and I would walk a mile, run a mile, and I did that. Well, that fall, I completed the Denver Half Marathon and it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Remember, I was the fat kid who was picked last in gym class. To think that I could do something like this was absolutely amazing to me. So after I had completed this, I was a little bit intrigued. I wondered if it might be possible for me to do a triathlon. I was talking with a friend who uh, at a party who was part of a women's only triathlon team. And she said, you just come to this team and the coaches will teach you everything you need to do. So I've been biking around the neighborhood with my family and I knew now that I could do the run, but I just wasn't sure about that swim. 
Well, I went to the first swim practice and, you know, I could not even swim across one length of the pool. Apparently taking 20 years off from swimming is not such a good idea. I got out of the pool crying and went to the locker room and one of the coaches had to come and get me and encourage me to come back. I went to those swim practices all through that winter, but boy, I got to be honest, it was tough. A lot of times I cried in the car on the way to swim practice because it was so difficult for me, but I kept going. Now, after, oh, and that leads to weight loss secret number two, and that's that one small change each day adds up to big results. I know sometimes those little changes don't seem like they're really going to be that effective, but when you add them up over time, it really does make a difference. So after I'd been swimming in the pool, it was time to move into open water. Now, open water is a whole different ball game from uh, swimming in the pool. And the team that I was a part of had some different race simulations and practices and things like that. Thank goodness, because when I did my first open water race simulation, I had a panic attack in the water and I actually had to be pulled out of the water in a boat. Well, that was really tough. I had to work through all of my mental issues with that, train for that, but I did finish my first triathlon. There's me with my friend Jan. We were uh, practicing our bike, and there's a finish line. So believe it or not, I, I did finish that first one, and then I went on to compete over in over 50 different triathlons of all different distances, um, in different places. There's me coming out of the water. It's still a really big deal to finish the swim <laughs> and events. So after I had um, been competing for a couple years in different types of triathlons, and when I say compete, for me, that just means to finish. If I could finish, I considered that a huge victory. Sometimes I was almost last. Sometimes I was last, but I finished it. That was always my goal was just to be able to finish. So after I had been doing this for a few years, I said to my husband, I think it might be possible for me to finish a half Ironman. Now, half Ironman is a 70.3, 70.3 miles. It's a 1.2 mile swim, a 56 mile bike and a 13 mile run. It's a huge event. At that particular time in Colorado, which is where I was living at the time, uh, races sold out very quickly and they're very expensive. This race at this time, I believe, was $395, which for our family, my husband's a pastor, um, that's, a, that's a lot of money. That's a really big deal. So I remember distinctly, I was sitting at my computer in um, December because I had to sign up for the race, which was going to take place in August in December because it would sell out the first day. And I'm sitting there with my credit card in my hand thinking, do I really want to sign up for this? What if I can't do it? What if I get injured? What if something happens? And my husband walked by. By this time, he was so supportive of my, my endeavors. And he said, just do it. If nothing else, you're training for your, you're getting the motivation to train for the next year. So very nervously, I push that button to sign up for that triathlon. Well, that was it. Now I was committed. I had to do this. So a small group of us continued to train through that whole year we trained for that Ironman. I would get up early in the morning and swim. I would go for long bike rides. While my family was still sleeping, I would go for runs. And during that time, I bought a, a magnet and it said 70.3. And I stuck it on my refrigerator, and that was my motivator. When I finished this race, I was going to take that magnet off of my refrigerator and put it on the back of my car to show what I had accomplished. So all through that winter and into the summer, I trained. Well, race day came for this half Ironman, and it was hot. In fact, I found out later that it was so hot that lots of the professional athletes dropped out of the race because it was so hot. But I was ready to go. I was committed and I had trained for this. So I got through the swim, which was a 1.2 mile swim. Definitely not easy, but I was able to accomplish it. And then onto the bike. And the bike was my is was and is my strongest event, 56 miles. So even though it's my strongest, I'm still definitely not very fast. But I was able to accomplish it. So now it's time for the run. Oh, this is a big deal. 13 miles. And by this time I was exhausted and it was midday because I'm not that fast of an athlete in the heat. 
in Boulder, Colorado, where there is no shade whatsoever. But I'm committed to do this run. So I got to tell you, uh, as I was starting off on the run, a lot of the faster athletes were already finished. So they were cheering for me. Yay, good job. As they were going back to their cars because they were done. Not exactly the best feeling. <laughs> but I set out on this run and I had trained. And so again, just my usual pace, walk a mile, run a mile, walk a mile, run a mile. And maybe there was a lot more walking in there. There were two laps to this event for the 13 miles, a little over six miles for each one. So I got through the first six miles, just doing my walk a mile, run a mile. I've got six more miles to go. And boy, was it getting tough. Well, my wonderful family had, um, gotten some, had gotten together and written some notes for me, my kids, and these were so motivating for me. I stuck them in the pockets of my triathlon jersey, and I would pull them out when I needed them. And they say, good job, Mom. I love you, Mom. You are awesome. I love you. And this is my favorite from my son, Paul. He says, Mom, you rock? With a question mark. <laughs> he wasn't exactly sure. So as I'm getting up to the aid stations, they had aid stations for us, and I'm at mile seven and then mile eight. I would take a cup of water in each hand, and I would drink one, and then I would pour one over my head because it was so hot to cool down. As I'm doing this, I realize that my notes that were in my pockets were starting to disintegrate, and I'm thinking, oh, no, I can't do that because these were really what was getting me through. And as I get to mile nine and mile ten, the volunteers are starting to take down the tents because there were just a few of us left. And I know that they're tired at the end of a long day, but I got to say that was pretty discouraging to see that. But I persevered on because I just absolutely didn't want to quit. And as I get to mile 11, I've got just a couple notes left in my pockets. And one is from my daughter, and I've got teenage kids at this time, and as those of you know who parent teens, to have any kind of encouragement from a teenager is a really big deal. And I pull out this note from my daughter, and it says, Mom, I'm proud of you, and that, that was such a motivator for me. And then I got to mile 12, and there was a note from my son. He said, You can do this, Mom. You've got it. And that was the motivation. I still get emotional. That was the emotion. That was the motivation that got me through to the finish line. And I was able to finish. I finished the 70.3 miles. And what an amazing experience. My family was there waiting for me at the finish line. And I truly give God all glory and credit that me, the couch potato, was able to finish this triathlon. And it was all because of him and the amazing work that God has done in my life. So I had to save my dusty shoes. With <laughs> I saved them for years and years because it just showed the accomplishment that I had done. And you had better believe I took that 70.3 off my refrigerator and put it on my car to show that accomplishment. And that leads to weight loss secret number three, and that is you are stronger than you think. I know so many things might seem impossible, but you can do it. And it's not because of you, but it's because of God who is working in you. I never thought that I would be a triathlete. I mean, I was the kid who loved to sit and read, not go out and do things. I avoided exercise. Yet God had this amazing plan for me. And one of my favorite Bible verses when it comes to my weight loss and my exercise endeavors is this one from Isaiah 43. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I know if you've tried to lose weight before and not been successful, it, it, it gets really discouraging. But this is God telling you he's going to do a new thing. God did this amazing new thing in my life, and he will do a new thing in your life, too. Well, God continued to work some pretty amazing things in my life. After I had done triathlons for a number of years, I was invited to participate in a biking event. And what uh, made this event really special is my son, Zach. This is Zach, my youngest. He was diagnosed with a rare genetic metabolic disorder. It's called gluteric acidemia type 1. Zach's body does not properly digest protein. And uh, this is actually us on his Make-A-Wish trip. We took a Make-A-Wish trip to Disney World, and he is doing very well. But he will have lifelong challenges. So I was invited to participate in a 150-mile bike ride for Children's Hospital in Colorado. 
it, it still just touches my heart how God has worked this because in the past, I never would have been able to do an event like this. Yet because I had lost weight and because I was training, I was able to participate in this event. Now, this is no easy bike ride. We biked over Vail Pass. We biked through mountains and uh, all to raise money for Zach and other kids like him but I was able to accomplish it. And what an incredible weekend it was. I actually did it two different years. So one of the things that's really neat about this event, it wasn't a race, it's a ride, but um, all for charity, is that at the finish line on the third day of this event, they have kids from the hospital who are handing out the medals and what a special treat that is. So as my family was waiting for me to come in for the finish line, my son saw these kids who are handing out medals and uh, one of the kids came over and actually gave him a medal too. And it was such a touching moment. He came, I'm going to get emotional again. <laughs> he came up to me and he said, mom, mom, I won the Courage Classic. <laughs> I won, I won. And it was so cute and so sweet. And so this is what it's all about, that I was able to do something like this for my son and other kids like him that I never would have been able to accomplish in years past. I just, my tears are ones of joy and thankfulness um, that God would work this in my life. And today, um, I don't do so much with triathlons anymore, but I train for Taekwondo. And this is my broken boards from one of my previous tests. And I'll be very soon training for my black belt in Taekwondo. I had somebody ask me once if those are pizza boxes. Those are not pizza boxes. Those are boards that I broke. So God continues to work new things in my life. And I always just thank him and continue to be amazed. And God will work new things in your life too, with your weight loss, with your fitness, and so many other things. Uh, another thing that just totally astounds me that God has led me in this direction, but I'm so thankful, is that now I run an online fitness program and weight loss program for women called Faithful Finish Lines. And it's just amazing to me that God would choose me for this because I, I feel so humbled and honored. We have an amazing group of women. We have a number of programs, so I'd really encourage you to check it out. We offer a free five-day challenge called Grow Your Faith, Lose the Weight, and we would love to have you join us. So I'm Sarah with Faithful Finish Lines, and I encourage you to use these weight loss secrets, to use your faith in what God has given you, and most of all, I want to encourage you that you can do it. For so many years of my life, weight loss felt completely impossible, and any type of fitness endeavors like these I wasn't even considering because they just seemed so out of my reach. But I'm here to tell you, it is absolutely possible you can do it. And I'm here to encourage you along the way. I'm Sarah with Faithful Finish Lines. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Bye-bye. Take care.